Okay, so here's a quick video walkthrough for problem number 20 on our part one um, worksheet. And so, obviously this one's definitely challenging. I think it's the only one that just has both of these um, radicals, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. But it's going to be very similar to what we've done, and so it definitely starts exactly the same way. So here's the idea. We always want to look at what's in the bottom of our fraction because we don't want to have anything that has a square root symbol in the bottom of our fraction. And so to get rid of that, we're going to multiply by that number, square root of 10, divided by itself, just like we've done in the other one. So we're going to start this problem multiplying by square root of 10 over square root of 10. Because remember, by multiplying um, by square root of 10 over square root of 10, it's just like multiplying by 1, and so the, the value of everything is not going to change, um, but we're going to get it into a, a form that we like better. And so here, here we go. So remember, anytime we're multiplying fractions, we're multiplying across, so top times top and bottom times bottom. On top, we get square root of 5 times square root of 10, and on the bottom, we get square root of 10 times square root of 10. And I'm going to take this step by step, so this might even be a little bit slower than before. Um, the way to work with square roots being multiplied by themselves is to multiply the numbers underneath, but then get whatever you get. Like, for instance, 5 times 10 is 50, right? But it's not just 50. It's going to stay under the square root. So the top of our new fraction becomes the square root of 50. Again, the reason is 5 times 10 is 50, but since they're both square roots, it stays under the square root. Same thing on the bottom, 10 times 10 is 100, so this should be the square root of 100. Now, there's a reason why we are doing this, right? Because every time we multiply the bottom um, by a number that is the same number as itself, it's going to give us a perfect square. And so this next step, we're going to ignore the top for now. I'm going to keep it as square root of 50. But again, the reason why we multiplied by square root of 10 over square root of 10 is because the square root of 100 um, is a perfect square. If I take the square root of 100, that is actually just 10. And so now I no longer have a square root in the bottom of my fraction. And so that's huge. And so the next step then to continue to finish this up is now we got to simplify this square root of 50. And 50 is not a perfect square. Um, and so if we just put this into our calculator, we'll get a decimal. Obviously, we don't want that. And so we want to break this down. And we need to look for the biggest perfect square that fits into 50. Remember, our perfect squares are 1. 4, 9, um, 16, 25, 36, 49, and so on, right? And the reason we call those perfect squares is because 1 is 1 squared, 4 is 2 squared, 9 is 3 squared, 16, 4 squared, 5 squared, and so on, right? And so if you're looking at these numbers up top, thinking about what's the biggest one that can multiply into 50, I think what we'll find is it's 25. 25 times 2 gives us 50. And so we can rewrite the top of that fraction as square root of 25 times the square root of 2. And the bottom of the fraction is still 10. But again, the reason why we want to break up 50 like that is because when we break it into 25 times 2, we can actually take the, the square root of 25 because, again, it's just 5, right? And so we can rewrite the square root of 25 as 5. The square root of 2 has to stay there, so it becomes 5 root 2 on top, and then a 10 on the bottom. And so that's great, but the last thing you need to ask yourself is the numbers that are not inside the square root, they create like a fraction. We can think of this as 5 divided by 10 or 5 tenths. Can this be reduced? And 5 tenths can be reduced because 5 is half of 10, and so 5 tenths is one half. And so we can write this as one times the square root of two over two. Again, the reason is five over 10 is equivalent to one over two, right? So we just reduce that fraction. Now the very last thing we can do to simplify it up is this one in front, one times the square root of two. We never actually have to multiply anything by one. And every time we can we see it, remember, we can just kind of assume it's there. And so we can finish this off by just dropping that one and just calling it square root of 2 up top divided by 2 on the bottom. And that would be our final answer. There is nothing left to do to simplify that. And 
if you want to just double check your work, type square root of 2 divided by 2 into your calculator, and then also go ahead and type the original problem, square root of 5 divided by square root of 10, and you should see the exact same depth. All right, so I hope that helps. Thank you very much for your question.